Hey, it is Thursday, May the 6th, 2021. And this is another edition of Thursday Thoughts with Richard. Normally, I can sit down and I can bust one of these out in one take. Normally, the words just flow. I generally don't have an issue with orating in front of a mic. But today, this may be take number 10 or 11. I don't know. Um, it's something that I wanted to share, but I haven't been able to quite get the words out like I wanted. But I'm going to give it a whirl right now. My lovely wife, Caitlin, on Sunday, she would showed me a picture um, of me, my eldest daughter, Macy, and my father in 2016 that I didn't know she had on her phone. I don't have a whole lot of pictures of me and my father with my children. Um, he just wasn't a guy who would ever get front and center and take a picture. Just wasn't his idea of a good time. He didn't like to be in the spotlight. Um, we are dramatically different in that sense that it does not bother me a little bit to uh, be front and center. I got that from uh, another side of the family, but that's a, that's another story. Um, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit today because it's wild after you lose somebody that close to you, a parent, it's been three years ago in March. So a little over three years. Um, and I, and of course you have your emotional times in the first years of blur and, and it hit me hard. I mean, we've talked about that on, on the podcast. It was a difficult time in my life. Um, and I didn't always do the right things or handle it well. But one thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, I, I feel like I've gotten through it. My father-in-law, who gave me some of the best uh, wisdom that I've ever heard, he told me that somebody had told him after his father passed, see, his father um, died unexpectedly in a car wreck when he was 19. And he told me, you don't ever get over it. There's no part of your being that will ever feel like I'm over losing my parent. You just get through it. And so three years later, I mean, I can't say that I ball or I cry about it every day, but I have my moments where I feel some melancholy. But for whatever reason on Sunday, when she showed me this picture, the tears welled up and I felt an overwhelming sense of emotion that I haven't felt in a while. And I don't know why, but I wanted to share it with y'all. Um, for those of you that have gone through loss or that may go through loss, we all do at some point. It's just different times. And it's the, it's the strangest thing because you can be completely broken on in the inside and avoid be there and you look completely fine and the rest of the world goes on, but you're sitting there in darkness. And so if you feel that way or you end up feeling that way at some time, know that it's normal and know that it's a process and that you've got to learn how to grieve intentionally. Or, or it does come out in uh, unexpected ways. But I wanted to talk a little bit about, because obviously his, his death had sent us on this journey of what I'll call live it full. We had always tried to embrace every day and to live life with purpose, as we say. But it really changed my mindset on what my priorities were in life. And it's been a, I mean, obviously it's been a challenge even the past few years, but it hit me hard. But I wanted to share with you, there's a Latin phrase called momento mori, which literally translates to remember you will die. It's something that I believe the Greeks said to remind themselves that they were mortal and to live each day. But it, it sucks because I think sometimes in life, at least for me, it took a huge unexpected loss for me to understand what was important to me. And so if you're listening to this and you're at a crossroads in your life and you don't know, I hope that most people don't have to get kicked in the face like I did to understand what's important to them. Take stock of what is. And if you're not living your life in a way that is conducive to what you think your priorities are, then make a change today. Because if I could go back, I've lived my life as much as possible with what I would say with no regrets, because I've always said at the time I made that decision, for whatever reason, I felt like it was the right decision. And I try not to live with regrets, but there's things I regret. There's conversations I wish that I could have had with my father that I'll never get the opportunity to now. And I don't want to leave my kids ever feeling that way. And I'm not saying that's his fault because it's as much on me as it was him. But if you're estranged from somebody, and I wasn't, I had a great relationship with him. But if you are, and you want that relationship, do it today. 
if you want to have a conversation with your kids that if you died tomorrow, you wished or they would have wished you had with them, have it with them today. Memento mori. We will die. I was listening to Sean Whalen Friday at Million Dollar Mastermind, and he talked about freedom. But one of the things he talked about with freedom was the reason I want freedom and that I have freedom is because I understand that my ticket could get punched any day. He might not make it off the stage. He might not make it home. Flight might go down, might have a heart attack. We're not in control of those things. And so there's a level of freedom that comes with understanding that because memento mori, remember, you will die. And it's not morbid. It's not being negative. It's actually the opposite of that because it's, it's, it's a stoic thing when you understand that that's a possible outcome of life. We just don't know when. And so if you're, if you're having conversations, if you're not having conversations that you want to have with somebody, have them. If you need to tell somebody you love them, tell them. If you need to tell somebody you're proud of them, tell them. Quick little story. Um, I don't know that I ever heard my dad tell me he was proud of me. I'm sure he was, as I am proud of my children inherently, regardless of what they do. But a man that knew him really well that worked with him a long time messaged me afterwards. And it's kind of funny because I knew this gentleman outside of my father, and he did not realize that my dad was my dad. And he messaged me after my dad passed and said, I never realized you were his son. And then he, he told me, your dad was so proud of you. And it's a moment in my life that I probably for the first time ever let go of all my, I mean, just it, it, the tears came like rain. And I don't think I've ever been such an emotional mess as that day. And it's, and it's not, it was, it was a simple thing, but he told me something I don't remember my dad ever telling me. And he must have felt it because he told somebody that he worked with how proud he was of me. And so what I'm going to tell you, I'm going to leave it at this. You're going to die. At some point, your ticket's going to get punched. You need to live every day with purpose. Leave, live every day intentionally to where if you checked out tonight, the people around you would know that you love them, you're proud of them, and leave them that legacy. Don't leave them questions. Remember, memento mori, you are mortal. So live every day like it's your last. It's cliche. It's hard to do. But if I checked out today, my children, my wife, they know that I love them and that I'm proud of them and that they were my world. I feel like I'm good with the Lord. I'm going to leave them in a good financial situation. And so at the end of the day, that's the best that I can do. But go out, tell those people those things. Tell them you love them. Tell them you're proud of them because you might not be here tomorrow. All right, guys, you continue to live it full.